My name is Michael Monroe. Welcome to Elma Electronics Introduction to OpenVPX. This is part one of a series in which we'll cover the fundamentals of the standard. The primary motivation for OpenVPX was to develop a new computing architecture that supported much faster signaling as well as both the 3U and 6U mechanical form factor. OpenVPX is a point-to-point -point architecture which allows it to support multiple topologies. VPX is also fabric agnostic, which means it can be used with any of the popular signaling protocols such as PCI Express and Ethernet. In addition to the well-established convection and conduction cooling methods, a number of more elaborate cooling approaches have been standardized for OpenVPX. OpenVPX is being used in many new programs for radar, surveillance, electronic warfare, and software-defined radio. It is replacing systems where custom designs used to be the norm, as well as tech refreshes of older architectures such as VME and Compact PCI. NASA and the European Space Agency are both evaluating space VPX for its fault-tolerant redundancy. VPX is also being implemented by all three services, as well as a number of foreign defense agencies. A highly compelling aspect contributing to the success of the OpenVPX architecture is the large number of suppliers who now offer VPX-compatible products. To date, there are over 45 companies offering standard VPX products, including several prime contractors who are also designing boards and making them available to outside customers. As this slide shows, VP, OpenVPX is extensively documented with over 47 ANSI VITA standards supporting every aspect of the VPX architecture family. As we increase capabilities, new documents continue to be added to support them. OpenVPX is defined in terms of slot, backplane, and module profiles. Backplane profiles define the type of slot profiles being used and the interconnections between those slots. Interconnections are described in terms of lanes, pipes, and channels. The fat pipe is the most popular, which offers four transmit and four receive lanes. Base T Ethernet is usually implemented over a thin pipe, which provides T transmit and two receive lanes. Slot-to-slot -slot Certes Ethernet is now supported at speeds up to 10 gigabits per second over a single ultra-thin pipe, which provides one transmit lane and one receive lane. OpenVPX is a rules-based standard. It is written using the premise of rules, recommendations, and permissions to offer as much clarification as possible to the implementer. Every rule has a compliance requirement a feature that was added to guarantee interoperability. The basis of OpenVPX is built on the notion of slot profiles. Specialized slot profiles make OpenVPX even more flexible and represent the many different developed solutions. Today, there are 24 6U slot profiles and 57 3U slot profiles, 3U being the most dynamic and popular card size today. A recent trend is the move from slots with a lot of open user-defined area to slots that are more fully defined. On the left is an example of a popular 3U slot profile. It only defines two fat pipes and two ultra-thin pipes, and there is a lot of open user-defined area. The middle figure demonstrates how a typical manufacturer actually uses all of that undefined area. This practice of customizing the user-defined area has made it difficult for designers to find second sources for VPX cards. Interoperability is compromised because boards are not interchangeable. The slot profile on the right, however, is an example of where the industry is moving today. A fully defined slot makes interoperability much more likely. This doesn't mean designers can't have a lot of different features, it just means they have to use the pins on the backplane in the same way. Here are some examples of the different possible backplane topologies shown in representative developmental backplanes. In actuality, most companies will use backplanes customized for their specific application. On the left is an example of a fully meshed topology in which every slot is connected to every other slot with a fat pipe. 
in the middle, you see a switched topology example, which uses a switch to make the connection between one payload slot to the other. On the right is one of the more complex backplane topologies, which was developed by the Vita 84 standards group, referred to as the CMOS architecture. OpenVPX is also popular because it's rugged and continues the use of the ever popular 3U and 6U Eurocard form factors familiar to those who have used older architectures such as VME and Compact PCI. What truly differentiates OpenVPX are the high speed connectors. There are actually three families of backplane connectors that share the same footprint requirements but offer different advantages. Although they are not intermatable because they have the same footprints, it's easy for vendors to offer backplanes and cards with either style of connector as simple build options. As OpenVPX continues to grow, recent additions and extensions include optical connectors that support parallel fiber optics using the popular MT ferrules, and also a variety of backplane coaxial connectors. VPX cards are also compatible with the highly used PMC and XMC mezzanine form factors, as well as the newer FMC and FMC plus mezzanines for FPGA computing, allowing even greater flexibility with the architecture. Another recent addition is that of radial clocks. All of this makes OpenVPX an extremely capable architecture with a lot of features to make new solutions possible. Thank you for joining me today in this quick tutorial on the fundamentals of OpenVPX. Join us for more tutorials such as OpenVPX backplane profiles, Vita 67.3 RF connectors, and, Open, and Vita 66 optical connectors. I'm Michael Monroe.